And we are live with Kudu TV, episode three, capturing the essence of the bra with the Kudu smoker lid with Kudu founder, Stebbin Horn. All right, guys, I swear to you, it was raining 10 minutes ago <laughs> in Georgia. Every episode, we're guaranteed to get soaked, but that's all right because we can roll with the punches. So, of course, I am honored to be back with Kudu Bromaster, Chris Bowles. <laughs> Uh, Chris, you want to talk something about your, uh, what did you call it? Uulation. Uh, Uulation. Bevan, who's a new Cootie Nation member, said he really appreciated my Uulation. And I appreciate that I've learned a new word to put with the annoying noises that I make. <laughs> All right. Well, one of the annoying <laughs> noises that you make. So, we're here to talk about the smoker lid. And there is uh, something when it comes to smoking on the Cootie Grill that is so much fun because you're going to have to balance the interactiveness of the kudu open fire cooking system with the essence of smoke and one of the things that i want to talk about just early on francis mulman said it best and if you don't know who that is check him out he is the king of open fire cooking is that smoke is invasive it is so accurate and pungent you do not need to use that much of it and what is nice about the kudu system is that because our smoker lid is in an open system the smoke cycles in and it cycles out and it allows you to smoke in a way that is e extremely flavorful but also not overpowering. I think that's one of the things you and I have talked about when it comes to smoking on the kudu. So when you look at uh, um, all of the ways to preserve meat in the early culture days, there was salt, of course, but then there was smoke. I lived in Alaska and they would build these kind of tentish looking things and they would shove all their meat in there. They'd smoke it for a day or longer. And what, what, so smoke in the, in the earliest ways is used as a preservative. Now, obviously, because people got so accustomed to that food, they, uh, it's become a flavor profile that especially in America, we really, really enjoy. And one of the things that I really appreciate about this uh, versus some other systems, when it's all closed, it becomes like overly uh, acrid, I guess is the only word I really know how to use, just too smoky. And it's innate, so I've been using lighter woods and things like that, but the ability that the that the kudu brings is that the wood or is, the, is we get new smoke in and then it leaves and it's gone new smoke in and, and it just keeps a fresh cycle of wood of wood smoke a fresh wood smoke right and so one of the things we're going to do we're going to do a uh, we've got a porterhouse steak here that we're going to finish in a way that allows you to kind of capture a very smoky steak that also isn't overdone so just to get that kind of prepped and started we're going to go ahead and move our cast iron skillet over the fire here we're gonna get that nice and hot. Um, but the first thing we wanna talk about is ways to use the smoker lid with the kudu. Now what's nice about it is that this handle can be captured right here in the elevation bar. So that's your resting spot. You're not gonna be taking that on and off and having to place it somewhere. It just nests right down in that, that area. Um, when you take the actual grill surface out, you can create more room to put in, uh, maybe you're smoking a turkey, maybe you're smoking a various, um, um, a larger piece of meat. Here, we're using the smoker lid without the grill surface inside of the grill. And if you'll take that off, we've got our rotisserie. We're doing some um, chickens here, some barbecue chickens, where you can see that nice spinning inside there. And then with the smoker lid on top of it without the grill, that, those birds are spinning and capturing that smoke and getting that smoky flavor along with the, the, the rotisserie. Chris, why don't you talk about what we're doing with the cold smoke and talk about cold smoking and how you can't cold smoke with a lot of grills, but with our grill, you can. And let's talk about that. Wow, look that! Look at that. That's amazing. So, what do we got going on over there? So cold smoking, first of all, is uh, at or below 90 degrees. So the idea is, is we're not cooking uh, anything with, with the fire um, we're, we're only using the smoke to flavor, in this case, the cheese and the salmon. And this salmon's been uh, cooked also, but we wanted to demonstrate the whole cold smoking. But see that there's there's only like a smoldering amount of, of heat over here. I mean, there's no, there's just it's just embering into this flavored sort of sawdust here that's bringing us the smoke. There's a couple of different products. The Amazing Gil Grill's got one, and you put pellets in it. There's another one that's like basically a, a tube that you put the pellets in. But you can put it in there, put it, put the dome back on, and you've got um, get you, over the handle there. You've, there you go. And you're circulating 
this smoke in there and you can just set it and forget it. And usually for, you know, for a big slab of salmon that I've done before, I want to leave it in there at least five to six hours. Some people even say overnight. Um, the, it, the, the main thing is you probably have to have a torch on that amazing grill that I was talking about to, to get it going. But it basically, it's a whole different kind of flavor versus cooking something over the smoke versus just having it basically uncooked, but flavored with the smoke. And that goes great with cheese and salmon, but there's meats that, that, that you can do that with as well. So look here, now that we put the lid back on it, you can see the smoke coming out of the bottom of that, but it's got no heat. There's no temperature there. So, you know, we're doing this in August, but if you're doing this in January or December or, or Thanksgiving, you, your temperature is gonna be well below that 80 or 90 degrees that you need to cold smoke. And you're gonna be able to do this so easily on the kudu while you're cooking other things. I mean, if you look at it, we've got essentially four things going on over here. We've got the cold smoke going. We've got the rotisserie chickens that are getting smoked over there on the back. We're gonna finish this nice porterhouse and we're gonna sear it on the plancha that comes with the basic kudu grill. And then we're gonna move it up to finish up with smoke and get that smoky flavor on that bread. So it's, it's really just a fantastic way to smoke and do so many things. Chris, talk about some other things that you've smoked that you've really enjoyed. I think you did a big thing of bacon at one point. I've done big, thing, big things of bacon, but the first thing that I ever did on a kudu, ever for anything, and is when I first met Stebbin uh, with the kudu grill, he said, uh, you know, help you know, I wanted to be convinced that the, that the kudu grill could do what I wanted to do with it. So I said, let's get a porchetta. And I was really into porchettas at that time. And I had a bunch of people coming over and it took about five hours because it's a slow cook. It's really a slow cook animal, but it's a it's a por an entire pork belly uh, rolled up with a bunch of seasoning and herbs on the inside. And it had the only way to do it is to slow cook it. The coolest thing, though, that I, I realized um, only during that cook is I was about to reach for a torch because the the, the porchetta's got the actual skin of the pork on the outside, and one of the really tasty parts about that specific dish is the crispy skin. And so I was about to go get a torch to crisp up the skin, which is what a lot of chefs do when they cook it in an oven or wherever. And Seven's like, no. He just threw the lid off and goes, why don't we just lower it over the, over the, over the embers? I was like, uh, uh, okay. And, and man, it worked great. And the smoky flavor that it imparted in there, the fact that I was able to cook it, I ended up cooking, uh, that's like when we were doing the, uh, the poiki, I cooked the risotto, fed 20 people that night. Um, but what we did, just like you were saying earlier about using two of these rings, the porchetta was like this tall, and so the, and the, the lid was just kind of too close to it. So we took the grill surface down here and then put another ring and put the lid on top of it, and it was phenomenal. Yeah. I've made it a, m a bunch of times since then. And so one of the things we talk about is versatility with the kudu because you're going to be managing a temperature, you're going to be managing a heat zone that is all based on the amount of fuel you're using, the type of fuel, and a combination of both wood and um, charcoal. So when it comes to smoking, the things that I like to do, and I've, we've soaked some wood, we soaked some cherry wood, we um, little blocks of it, and then also chips of it, and we've thrown that in there on top of the hot charcoal, so that's where we're getting our smoke from. Now, if you didn't want to smoke, or you had something that was so big that was inside here that you didn't have room to put your smoking element inside the grill. One of the things that I like to do is I will take our kudu charcoal starter. So this is just one half of our kudu charcoal starters. I will put aluminum foil on three sides of it and I'll get my fire and smoke started in here. I'll place this inside the grill like that and this is where I'm generating my smoke from. And then I will take this and just put it right on top like that. So my food will be over here. My smoke will be generated over here. It'll come through. And because I've got it with aluminum foil on three sides, it can only go into the smoker lid. It'll come in and cycle out. And that's a fun way just right out of the gates to start smoking with your kudu grill. I want to point out that I've never seen at any time where we've used three lids at one time. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're really overdoing we're only We're only showing three lids to say, Here's a way, here's a way, here's a way. So just so you don't think that we three lids. And uh, if anybody wants a, uh, well, that won't even work because I'd have to go out and actually buy four kudu lids. <laughs> I was going to say I'd like to see something in production with four kudu lids, but that's, that's not realistic.
unless we're going to do that. So anyway, let's talk about how we're going to finish this porterhouse and what you've got going on here. Put a little black and seasoning on there. The first thing I did though is make sure it came up to room temperature. Big believer in uh, when you cook, uh, especially pieces of meat, like well, any really any meat, is to get the uh, piece of meat up to room temperature, and then using clean paper towel, dried it off both sides. And I just happened to put uh, that blackening seasoning on there. People put salt, pepper. Some people don't put anything. I like flavor, so uh, I put this on there. And uh, we're gonna sear it on the on cast the, iron on the plancha. cast iron plancha, and just do a quick sear on each side. And then we're gonna bring it up and, and cook it a little bit slower, around 200 or so degrees upstairs here on the grill. All right, and hopefully we've got hot enough charcoal after that deluge that we just experienced, but we'll, we'll get it going. So we're gonna get this going. It's starting to sizzle up. Um, we've got some humor from our producer in the background. That rainstorm really screwed up our charcoal because <laughs> it's just not making the sizzle that we wanted. <laughs> right. But do we have any questions from the audience, Tino? Anything that you've got to, anything you want us to talk about? Um, you, can we talk about the fact that you have borrowed your wife's glasses? Um, <laughs> just hand me the glasses. We don't need to let the audience. But these are super nice, so it's really hard to keep a straight face uh, <laughs> watching you uh, with, these, with these glasses on. Social Animal had some questions earlier. Um, he was asking about uh, smoking vegetables and how easy it is that you don't want to do that for a very long time. Right. So vegetables will, will capture flavor very quickly and you want some subtlety, <laughs> some flavor, but how do you manage your vegetables on the kudu? Um, Go ahead. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> we <all> like <laughs> There's been. <laughs> the man There's down. Been. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get the police tape recorded off the area right now. Where's the chalk? We draw up the body line and move the body off to another location. This is the greatest episode yeah. of all time. Right. And this is this is what we call real right. TV. This is real cooking. Real cooking. This is not stage. Yeah. You cannot make this stuff up. Red storm. It's, it's rated chickens. God is my witness. I thought chickens could fly. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna save the chicken. Back to the, back to the vegetables. <laughs> it's cooking with the porterhouse. My, my kids barbecue chicken porterhouse. My kids love what they call cutie vegetables. When I ask them what they want for their birthday, I say, "Daddy, I want cutie vegetables. Cutie vegetables are vegetables I put in the plancha, um, butter, olive oil, garlic that's been uh, you know just sweated a little bit. Put the vegetables in there, red pepper, maybe some herbs, maybe not. Just depends. Whatever the fresh vegetables we can find." And sometimes I'll put the lid over there, just get maybe 10 minutes of smoke in there. It doesn't take much at all. And the kids, they just love cutie vegetables. And then I just take the plancha, bring it inside, put it on the, uh, the counter, and we serve straight from there. Um, that's a big, that's probably been the number one thing that I've cooked on the cutie as far as wide, wide range appeal and popularity. Um, because it's just, it's, it's not something that people are used to or, or they've had before. But, you know, I'm mixing in sweet potatoes, sometimes I'm mixing in acorn squash, um, and it's just all mixed in uh, with other in-season vegetables, and they're great. It's a lot of fun. So, I want to show you guys, now that we've resurrected the, the rotisserie, obviously that was, that was quite easy. But come in here and let's check out the fact that we're doing a two chickens on the rotisserie. Look at that barbecue chicken just amazing and now we've got this porterhouse right here below so our chickens are cooked they're getting the smoky flavor and then we're able to finish with a nice porterhouse we've got some bread up here that's getting the smoky flavor we've got this cheese and salmon that's getting some nice smoky flavor so you've got a whole variety of stuff going on here um, that, that's really great so what was the purpose of the upside down coal basket on your smoked trout so that's a great question so there's an instagram image that just came out here recently that had the two charcoal baskets um, turned upside down i want to grab that real quick so what it what i was doing was we were smoking trout so i raised this actually raised the level of the meat inside the smoker lid 
so that it had as much smoke concentrated here at the top because the smoke cycling out at the bottom may not have been as thick and we really wanted to put a hard smoke on that um, trout so we used this to raise the meat up five inches and then it really was sitting at the top of the smoker lid really bathing in smoke that whole time so that was that was the reason for that and again that shows the ability to create with this grill i mean i think that's why chefs love this product i think that's why people that really love to grill out love this product because it's a blank canvas this grill doesn't tell you how to use it how to do anything with it it's up to you if you um, can come up with it you can do it on this grill and that's what everybody loves about it Stevan, speaking of that, one of the members of the Kudu Nation used a smoker lid in an innovative way to make a pizza the other day. Oh uh, yeah, that was right. We had a, a, a person that actually got their cast iron hot. They used that as their, 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 their base. So they put the pizza on it and then they put the smoker lid on top of that. So they turned the plancha that comes with the Kudu upside down and put it on the grill surface. Then they put the pizza on the top of the upside down plancha and then put the smoker lid on top of that. That allows you to get that high heat that you need to cook a pizza all the way through. And then it also captured that heating element, more of a baking to get the cheese melted, to get that nice smoky flavor. And uh, people have been doing that ever since we posted that. Uh, and it was, it, it turned out awesome. I've got a little cheat that uh, sometimes I do. If you're making, if you're doing your own dough, sometimes I mostly get my dough from the store. It's pre-done, but the biggest, hassle to me with dealing with pizza dough is the pounding it out I like a thin crust pizza and if you don't do all that pounding out and pulling uh, on on the dough itself you can get the, the gluten get like stretched <laughs> and so I've, a little cheat that I've done is I take a, I've got bowls like this without obviously without the handles on it they're bigger this and is I, a smoker lid this it's is not a, a bowl sorry <laughs> smoker lid and then I stretch the dough over that and I let it rest like that uh, and then come back to it because a lot of times if you put it into the grill, it'll shrink back like that. <laughs> I can't even look at Tito. All right, so what's next? This has been an uh, episode to remember. I, it's I mean, sunshiny. That's the main thing. Yeah, now that it rained for not used 20 to minutes, like, the, the sun has come out and now we're baking. So there it is, the smoker lid in all of its glory. Um, you know, we're going to move this steak up here. We're gonna let it get smoky. We're gonna let it rest and finish um, right beside. We're gonna just have a, a rotisserie of smoker lids here, the round robin, and um, and then we'll go from there. So check us out next week. It, it will not be uh, this sort of cluster, I imagine, with um, Chef Lynn Wells coming down from North Carolina to talk about all things cast iron it's gonna be an awesome event um, it's gonna be great to work with someone other than the kudu bro master and we're really excited about it so bro master may find out where they're having this and stop by <laughs> so check us out for kudu live